Curati Munoz from Mexico, then Marina Forti from Italy, and then from uh, far away and thanking him for staying, uh, following us uh, during the night, uh, Gil Beringer from Australia. So I give now the word to Philippe Texier. Thank you. <clears throat> we know that the murders of journalists are a universal problem, not only in no democratic countries, but all over the world. The introduction to indictment shows that since uh, 1992, more than uh, 1,400 1, journalists have been killed for doing their job. It precise that in at least uh, 900 of these cases, journalists were killed in direct reprisal for their work. The Permanent People Tribunal is conscious of the gravity and the importance of this plague consequence of a hostile environment for press freedom. For that reason, I have to say, as president of the PPT, and on behalf of uh, the PPT, a, a judge of his um, hearing, that the tribunal accept the indictment and the organization of the hearings on murders of journalists. We know that these grave violations of human rights, consequence of harassment, attacks, will of silence journalists are characterized by the unwill unwillingness of governments to protest journalists against intimidation and, finally, absence of trial. The result of that is a quasi-total impunity, 90% according to the indictment. The lack of criminal trials sends very negative messages and can silence a community of journalists and simulate self-censoring among, among journalists. <clears throat> the impunity have grave consequences, not only for the families, but for the society as a whole. The objective of the hearings is to hold states accountable for these violations and drawing attention to cases in which they are failed, not only to protect journalists against lethal violence, but to investigate into the journalist's death. The tribunal will base itself on the important work done by international and non-governmental organizations to document the submitted cases. To illustrate, to illustrate the systematic problem of the murder of journalists, three cases will be presented during the hearings in January, February, and March of uh, 2022. There are the cases of Sri Lankan journalist La Santa Wikrematunge, Mexican journalist Miguel Angel Lopez Velasco, and Syrian journalist Nabil Walid al Sharbaji. The examination of these cases will permit the analysis of human rights violations committed by the respective states against these journalists and the context in which these murders took place. However, we have to consider that the problem of murders of journalists and the wider problem of impunity for these murders is much more important than the cases examined. <clears throat> the debates of this first hearing show the globality of the problem. Cases in Colombia, Russia, eh, the Philippines, Malta have been uh, examined in Terralia, but many other cases are worrying in the world. The indictment remind that examples of impunity for murders of journalists exist around the world 
with majority of unresolved cases <clears throat> in 13 countries. The present concern is also the persistence of a problem. Sunday, a journalist was assassinated in the Philippines. The radio announced this fact, but it is probable that, like in the majority of the cases, this murder remains unpunished. This week, two Mexican journalists have been killed. We have to wish that, that this hearing and all the successive hearings of the PPT on the murder of journalists help to paint a better knowledge of these crimes and above all contribute to fight them and that follows uh, the impunity. Thank you. Thanks, uh, please, uh, Eduardo, for short comments. Thank you very much, Madam Prosecutor, and your team, fellow colleagues of this tribunal, ladies and gentlemen. Rampant impunity. Impunity is a critical problem. Impunity rate is so shocking. Lack of political uh, will. Those are words we heard today from witnesses and expert witnesses. 20 years ago, I was appointed a special rapporteur for freedom of expression at the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights. Unfortunately, at that time, I heard almost the same words. So, I accepted with high honor to be a judge at the Permanent People's Tribunal on the Murder of Journalists. We began a, an important process today, and I hope, other word that we listen today, I hope that our work will be useful to cope with the problem of impunity, and in doing so, I hope to honor the brave and courageous journalists that continue doing their job, a job that they are doing not for them, for all of us. Thank you. Thanks, Marcela Torati Munoz. Hello, good afternoon. I am honored to be here an honor to listen your testimonies, and thank you for, for sharing with us. I come from Mexico, a country where more than 104 journalists have been killed since 2000, and two of them last week. Personally, I met five of these journalists that now are dead, Armando Rodriguez, a journalist who reports about criminality in Ciudad Juarez, Regina Martinez, the brave correspondent of Proceso Magazine in Veracruz, Rubén Espinosa, photographer who ran away from Veracruz and was hidden in Mexico City. Both work in Proceso, the same magazine where I worked. In 2017, Miroslava Bridge was a uh, killed in Chihuahua, my hometown, for exposing names of nar narco-politicians. And weeks later, Javier Valdez, my friend, the most experienced journalist covering drug cartels and victims in Sinaloa. Also, on these dark times, some of my friends had been forced to leave the country. So I belong to a generation of journalists who became war correspondents in our own countries, who were forced to combine our journalistic job with the demand of justice, and forced to organize protests demanding not more deaths, and forced to organize trainings to learn and teach how we can protect ourselves and how we have to collaborate with other journalists 
in order to reduce our risks, because we talked always that government never will take care of ourselves. We also uh, were forced to look ways to push justice for some of our lost colleagues. Three times we create investigative teams to look for evidences, interview witnesses or relatives, visit uh, mass graves or crime scenes, analyze articles of some colleagues with the idea of fight impunity. But uh, we are, well, many of these things, uh, we think that <laughs> it, it was useless. Most of the time, uh, when we were uh, to investigate, we found journalists silence. Uh, they were terrorized with nightmares, not wanting to investigate problematic things, and all the community was silence. So, for that reason, and knowing that impunity uh, made our profession more dangerous, and impunity is an invitation to silence to silence other journalists and to silence the whole community because silencing journalists is not only a question of silence one unique people, you are silencing the cause that these journalists was denouncing as we see today. For that reason I am excited for being here in this tribunal. And because I think this is an opportunity to bring light to these situations all around the world and to, to ask governments what they have done for prevent, for stop these killings or other ways to silence journalists, to investigate and to punish this and give a message that is not normal, that a journalist must be harassed or attacked for investigate, for doing our jobs, that every time that a journalist is silenced, we all are silenced, and that is not normal. So I'm happy because I think that the things can and must be different, and this can be an opportunity uh, to change things. Thank you. Thanks, Marina Forti. Good afternoon and thank you to all of, uh, all of, all of you, thanks to the uh, prosecutor, thanks to all the witnesses that we heard this afternoon and the experts. Uh, we are basically dealing with the fundamental right, uh, that is the right of freedom of expression, of holding opinion, which is also, of course, the right to access information. Uh, now, we know that there are many ways to violate this right. Uh, censorship is one obvious way of limiting the work of journalists, but there are many more. Um, in the independent media and journalists can be silenced by making them difficult to uh, obtain the financial means to support themselves, to support their, 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 their own work or they can be silenced by legal harassment, as we have heard extensively this afternoon, uh, or by harassing them personally, for instance, in the case of women, uh, uh, using their personal status, <coughs> and in, case, uh, in this case, being women as a, um, as a leverage uh, to harass them. Or often in these times, we are um, more and more uh, hearing, um, uh, seeing that journalism is being delegitimized, uh, delegitimized deliberately, de de deliberately attacked, ridiculed, or uh, discredited, uh, often by those in power. And this delegitimizing of the work of journalists uh, not by chance uh, is often part of a wider delegitimization of the democratic institutions. And it's clear that delegitimizing journalism 
and the work of the media, of independent media in, in, in particular, is part of um, uh, undermining democracy. Um, and then, of course, there is plain repression, intimidation, physical intimidation, as we have heard, as my colleague uh, so clearly said. Uh, so the violence against independent journalists and media, and of course the most extreme of violence, uh, which is murder. Um, so this is why, um, as a journalist myself, and as a, as a journalist in a country that is Italy, not Mexico, of course, but we also know, uh, we do know what is organized crime, and we do know how um, harassment and uh, targeting um, individual journalists uh, can be a way of silencing uh, uh, those who investigate, for instance, on organized crime. Uh, so as a journalist myself and as a member of this jury, I'm very honored of being here as a member of this jury, uh, I know, I think we all know that each individual case uh, has, a, uh, has its own history and circumstances and uh, context. And uh, we, uh, in the process of this tr tribunal, we are, uh, uh, we are going to hear and consider uh, the specific cases that, has been, uh, that have been brought upon us. But we also know that these cases are emblematic of many more cases that, are, uh, that happens around the world. And they are emblematic of a general pattern of silencing independent media and independent journalists. Uh, and not only journalists, as my colleague said, um, by silencing um, journalists, uh, the threat is against the communities, against the society, the civil society organization finally is uh, a threat to the democratic life. So this is why I'm very uh, happy to be here uh, today and to be part of this uh, tribunal. Uh, I think, I hope for a common good. Thank you. Thanks. I ask now Gil Berenger, who is uh, talking from uh, Australia. Gil, it's up to you. Uh, no, the voice, the voice, Gil. Sorry. <laughs> Again. Again, again. It's mute. No, he, no. he alone. He muted again. He muted. Gil, you have to start again now because there is no, no voice now. No, but he muted. No, but they want to start again. He needs to unmute himself. Okay. Sorry. Good evening. Again. I speak from the central coast of New South Wales, 80 kilometers north of Sydney. This is the land of the First Nations Darkenjong people. It was never ceded to the invaders. It was stolen, armed robbery, if you will, with impunity. I acknowledge this and pay my respects to the Darkenjong elders, past, present, and emerging. I want to thank all those involved in organizing this historic event and those behind the scenes who have worked tirelessly to make it a success. Thanks to go to our prosecutor and those who have drawn up the impressive indictment for the process of prosecution to follow. It is an invaluable resource for those who wish to contribute in the future to the struggle to protect the essential democratic freedom, freedom of expression, and the community of journalists that is essential to its survival. Of course, we are most grateful to our witnesses who have been willing to inform us so effectively of their experiences and understanding of the issues we are facing. <clears throat> Recognizing their commitment to truth and justice, we hope they will not suffer any negative consequences. 
As a result of this very successful session, we now have a much better understanding of the threats to journalists and to democratic practice around the globe. I will make some comments on issues we all could be thinking about over the next months and about which some research would be useful. First, the pattern of attacks on journalists seems to be significantly different depending on the type of country. In all the data I have seen and heard tonight on the killing of journalists, two things stand out. We might call them silencing and strangling. First, the top 10, 12, even 20 countries listed as, um, uh, sorry, uh, where, where the killing of journalists are most frequent uh, are so-called developing countries with only a few exceptions, depending on how certain countries are categorized. They're usually the same countries. Some of them have significant ongoing conflicts. Some have authoritarian political leadership. Some have both. Some may have neither. Most of them have high rates of poverty and a large inequality gap, as well as other serious social challenges. Silencing by killing is a major modality in dealing with journalists in those countries. Of course, in those countries, sometimes other forms of repression are used also. Today, Maria Ressa has explained how the murderous Duterte regime is responding to a critical media in the Philippines. In the so-called developed countries, the killing of journalists is not a major tool of repression of the industry or individuals. Killing is delegitimating. It is inconsistent with liberal democratic hegemony. The disturbing case of Julian Assange is an example of how the US and several of its allies, including Australia, of which he is a citizen, strangle critical voices, all under color of law. Second, studying the political dynamics. The role of governments is contradictory. While they are obliged to enforce the law and to protect freedom of speech, the right to life, etc., they have not done a very good job of it. The impunity we have heard about today demonstrates that clearly. But remember, impunity is a political choice, and we need to study that choice. Where they have acted, we must study why. Third, protection. We must look at all possible methods for trying to develop protection for journalists and media institutions. We cannot rely solely on governments. That has been amply demonstrated today. Nor can we rely on their laws and judicial agencies. Often the governments, as we've heard, uh, are complicit. By the way, this occurs also with the killing of lawyers, as my research in the Philippines shows, in much the same way and for similar reasons. Unfortunately, as several witnesses have demonstrated today, international law and institutions have serious limitations. <laughs> Thus, civil society must take upon itself the responsibility to pressure governments to end impunity and to develop non-state practices to protect journalists and freedom of expression. Our first and our last witness have given us examples of how effective this can be. The Permanent People's Tribunal is also um, a step in the right direction. Each country should establish such tribunals to raise the consciousness of people to the threats their society faces. Lastly, there are other questions we should consider, but time prevents me from doing more than raise them here. To what extent is the corporate sector complicit in the attacks on journalists? And has the role of media organizations been contradictory? Thank you. Safe home. 
Thanks. Uh, it is our duty as Secretariat of the Permanent People Tribunal. Uh, before, beside uh, thanking for the impressive documentation which has been presented uh, to support and justify the indictment and the reception of the indictment by the People Tribunal, it is our duty also to say something about the way forward uh, in a long and very difficult uh, way in order to meet all the requests uh, and the failures which have been illustrated here. We have uh, three sessions now dedicated, each of them, uh, to the individual cases. The first one will be for uh, the Sri Lanka here in The Hague on the 12th and 13th of January 2022. The second one will be dedicated to, to Syria again in The Hague on the 16th and 17th of February. The third dedicated to, to Mexico, possibly and more surely in Mexico City on the 23rd, the 24th of March. We shall have uh, any time uh, before the end of May the final session when the People Tribunal will present uh, the verdict uh, on the uh, indictment which has been presented. I have to notify, to remind that uh, we have notified, uh, as it is clear in the statutes, uh, the indictment to the government which are involved, notifying also their right to defense to be present during the procedure in case they will not show up uh, as it could probably happen for the government we are uh, indicting. The tribunal, uh, according to the statute, will provide an independent rapporteur for the presentation of the reasons of the defense. Uh, the time is short, the day has been very long. I would not like to add uh, something else except possibly to mention the strict competence of the Permanent People Tribunal, which has uh, been shown by all what has been presented. Every time a journalist is intimidated or uh, murdered is in fact a violation not only of uh, his or her individual right to life and to be a witness of truth or free of information, but this is a direct attack and a violation of the right of people to the free and independent information. So I think that everybody agreed in front of all the example we had of a need of a better coordination among all those who are working for the journalist to consider the, the journalist issue and the murder of a journalist issue as an essential component of the broader struggle of people for their self-determination, life and dignity. Every time, I repeat, a journalist is killed, the violation of the people where the journalist is investigating is violated. It, it is important that the fragmentation of struggles uh, which have to do with the right of people and the right of the journalists will be better unified in order to assure a permanent monitoring of what happens and a shared investigation on how to look for solutions which are able to overcome all the obstacles which have been underlined in order to have, uh, nobody knows when, however, hopefully soon, the end of impunity. Thanks a lot for everybody, for the organizers who have been so careful, and uh, let's see each other in the next session. Thanks. Thank you, Gianni. Thank you to the esteemed judges, the Permanent People's Tribunal, our prosecution, our witnesses, and everybody in attendance. Uh, just as a logistical note that all of our registered guests and, of course, our special guests today are welcome to join uh, the Free Press Awards and dinner at the City Hall, just to your left. 
Uh, thank you so much and uh, safe travels home. Thank you.